Thanks, Clint. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am. Um, let me get the, on the mic. MC data scientist on the mic. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm filling in. I am the imputed missing data in this presentation. Um, ha ha. So uh, I'm a working data scientist in the city. I'm really excited to be able to say that. Uh, I've loved science since I was a little kid, exploring, uh, discovering, learning, seeing what we can do with numbers. Um, I would love to be able to talk to you today about the cutting edge of big data and scaling up to ever larger data sources and providing uh, real-time predictions to improve your analytics and optimization. But I'm not. Uh, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to go back a little bit farther to maybe what I think the origins and fundamentals of uh, data science, uh, data storytelling are. Because in, in uh, my business, uh, my work, uh, I sometimes find that the pitch, the story of the idea, uh, how it's told, how it's received, how it's retained, uh, makes the difference between whether a project happens or not, whether it gets accepted or not, whether it even gets adopted once it's done. So let's go all the way back to 500 BC, um, where big data can fit in the palm of your hand. Um, Let's just go forward. Um, we're going to memorize a deck of cards in order in two minutes. Here's our little deck of cards. Uh, this is When you set the time limit low, it becomes a big data problem. There's too much. It's too fast. And uh, you don't have enough space in your head. So I'm going to just hit again to generate some random decks. I'm going to set a timer. You can uh, do this however you want. Just start at the upper left-hand corner and work your way right across the rows. We're all going to do it together. And I'm going to hit start. I'll give you a warning at one minute and 30 seconds. You can do this however you want. You can write things down. You can talk to yourself. And we'll go. And I'll be memorizing along with you. OK. Just any way you want it. Nobody's talking. That's interesting. OK. You can use. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Doing so good, guys. I'm looking around the room. I see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Memories being made. <laughs> it's fun. Doing all right. Are we straining? Are our servers straining at our big data? One minute. Actually, a little bit less. Thirty seconds. Uh oh, we need our predictions now. And time, time. All right. Let's go back and see how we did and see what we tried. I'm gonna come back here. Do, do, do. Everybody feeling nice and relaxed? Let me go back in presentation mode. Um, I've got the right warnings. Okay, so uh, how do we do? Uh, I expect that we might not do too great. There's two chunks of information per card. We got a suit and a rank. Our short term memories don't hold very much. Six to 10 pieces of information tops. So that's like three to five cards. So how we did probably depends on our strategy, whether we crammed in a fast and furious way or uh, tried a slower or steadier approach, like a story. Anybody try this? Like a little story, a little pattern, a little mnemonic? King Carl, nobody? Uh, so let's all just read the cards off that we memorized in order here. We'll start with uh, everybody. The three of diamonds, yeah. Then the Seven of clubs, right? Uh, and then we've got, we'll go back to, I can read them off. What? Uh, 
not the ace of diamonds, but the ten of hearts. Yep, ten of hearts. Uh, then after that, we've got. Then we have the ace of diamonds. Anybody get me over four? Anybody follow me along? Four. Then the queen of hearts. Yeah. I lost my signal. My goodness. Oh, I can keep going. Then uh, the eight of diamonds after the lost signal. Queen of clubs. Do what? Um, have I tried turning it off and turning it back on again? Awesome. Great, great. So uh, I've obviously crammed a few more in there. Uh, after that, I got the seven of hearts, and then the four of hearts, and then the nine of hearts, and then the ten of diamonds, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, is there another way? There's obviously another way here to uh, solve this big data problem with our own brains as machinery to address the the, the constraints uh, that we have: time, size, storage, recall. It's biology. It's just fading. Oh my goodness! Uh, and this technique is uh, very, very old. So there was a poet named Simonides uh, back in 500 BC. Uh, somebody criticized his poetry. He took them outside as he was wont to do, and then the party burned down. Uh, he remembered everybody at the party by going through the seating arrangements in his head. He, and then he figured out, hey, taking that little memory journey, that worked for me. I can use that in uh, my everyday life, in my mad poet skills, etc. Um, because back then, paper wasn't handy. If you see a book, you're likely to only see it once. If you meet an interesting person, they're probably going to die of the plague before you meet them again. You need to remember everything. You are your own big data server at that point. Um, a trained memory, a trained artificial memory was the sign of an educated mind. Uh, so he made a system uh, that ex essentially did ETL, extract, transform, load. Uh, he took stuff that's made to fade, numbers, abstract, dull, haphazard, impersonal, and made a system to make it just the opposite of that. Concrete pictures uh, that are nonverbal, they're unusual, it's personal. This is his system, and many systems have been based on that afterward. It's much more than just numbers. It's not a savant's trick. Anybody can learn this. But in fact, numbers are just right there at the very first step of the process. Um, and I'm going to show you that process today that involves using your personal experience, trial and error, creativity, sense of humor, concentration, visualization, a little bit of neuroscience. So the numbers are just the first part of the issue. A lot of people, when you see big data, you go, oh, that's just for technical people. Actually, all these other traits are required. I think they're mandatory for good problem solving and problem presentation. Uh, so let's, let's walk through briefly the world championship method to uh, memorize some cards. Uh, the best of the best, get it down to 21 seconds. I'm not that fast, but you could eventually learn to be. Um, uh, it starts with a journey. Uh, our brains are already keyed to remember things in order. If you close your eyes right now, everybody, think about you're in your, where you woke up this morning, you're in your room, you open your eyes, you see your room, okay? And then if you leave your room, what's the next place you go to? And if you have to go to work, what's the next place? And then if you have to get to your car, mode of transportation, and then if you arrive at your work, you know, where do you go from there? I bet you can come up with at least 10 places. So I've come up with 52 locations from one place I used to live to another place I used to live in my mind. I see them very clearly from my backyard to my back porch. My backyard, there's the three of diamonds right there. My back porch, there's the seven of clubs. Uh, there's uh, more in the hallway. There's the ace of hearts or ace of, uh, uh, yeah, ace of clubs looking at me, etc. So uh, the next step, uh, the transform part, we gotta turn the cards into letters. We're not good at remembering letters, so we'll take the, uh, the numbers and turn them into letters accordingly. Uh, for the royalty, Jack, Queen, King, I just make them into friends, family, villains. Um, and, like, and then I turn those into people because your brain is already keyed to remember people. Uh, there was a study that came out that people have individual neurons fire in their brain when they see celebrities. You have a Mariah Carey neuron. That is both, that is both sad but amazing. Um, so your brain, already we know that your brain does things in order. That's a key. That's, a, that's your, that's your auto-incrementing primary key in the database of your head, and people have known that for 2,000 years. Uh, same thing with people. You don't key to numbers. Uh, they fall apart in your head, but people, you can do individual people. Here I've got some great ones. Daniel Day-Lewis is my four of diamonds. He's hunting. He's got a rifle. There's music playing. I added the music in. That's just fun for me. Um, 
Uh, that's another thing that I mentioned. It's like dry data memorization is obviously nothing, something no one can do. But when I'm memorizing a deck of cards, I'm actually just making a, amazingly interesting and unique mental pictures. And it's kind of like, huh, huh, huh. It's, it's fun. It's actually not frustrating. It's actually kind of entertaining um, after a while. So letters to people, and then you put it all together. So you see your empty location. If you guys go back to your bedrooms or wherever you woke up this morning, park benches, um, bars, uh, see like Daniel Day-Lewis running with a rifle in your bedroom, um, and then go out into the hallway, and there's Hulk Hogan ripping off his shirt with a championship belt. Like you're not gonna, your brain's not going to forget this anytime soon. It's unique. It's going to remember that time you met Hulk Hogan. It doesn't know that it's fake. You're feeding it bad data that's actually good data that actually has a message. Um, uh, the next step to making this stick is a little bit of like Pixar in your head, uh, is all the things that make memories sticky. So animation, using all your senses. When I see Hulk Hogan, I smell his sweat, unfortunately. I hear the ripping of the shirt. I hear the roar of the crowd. I see the glint of the light on his belt. This is just mental detail that anybody can, can do. Uh, and if something doesn't stick, I learned to do it over and over again. I used to have like Oscar de la Hoya as the 10 of diamonds for OD, Oscar Day, but that was weird. So I switched to OD from Garfield, OD. He's just OD and it just fit better. So like I just, you have creative control. You can rewrite how your memory code works. You also don't have to tell anybody. So if you remember your crush from high school, you don't have to tell anyone that they're the five of spades and you think about them every time you look at cards. Um, so, uh, here's an, ex here's the, uh, like the top level stuff here, people, action, object. You can take a person doing the action of the next card, doing the object of, uh, with the object of the third card. So if I see Daniel Day-Lewis ripping his shirt off, uh, like tearing his way out of a donut shirt, everyone take a moment to, there's sprinkles hitting the floor. Uh, the last of the Mohicans music is playing, but it's mixed in with like the Simpsons theme. Uh, he's got crumbs all over his face. He's going to win an Oscar for this. He just knows it. And that's in your bedroom, you know? You're not gonna picture five of those. Picture Daniel Day-Lewis falling out into the hallway. You know, you can't forget this. In fact, it's hard to forget. The, the memory system that Simon Edes came up with that world champions use, it's hard to forget. Uh, likewise, once data's on the internet, it doesn't go away. So looks like that principle still applies. Um, once you know this though, once you can have, uh, once you have your big data mastered, stored, extracted, transformed, loaded, it's time to predict the future based on what you know. I mean, you could go win Vegas, right? Like there's levels of like memorizing what's going on. So you can start by paying some attention to what's been played. You can keep a high, low index, you know, high cards, low cards. You can uh, memorize fully what's been played or you can do the whole deck or the whole bunch of decks. And the whole, the whole object of that is to get from knowledge to prediction and people are doing that now. Now we have the capability to go from, well, okay, you know all that. Well, what good does it do you? Well, I can predict what happens next. I don't have to do it all the time. I just have to make a difference because the difference between breaking even and being Las Vegas is like 1%. It's really small, but you just win more on the long term. So if you just have access to like all the transactions of a particular field, you can, you're basically counting cards at every table, at every game, you know, at every hand. Um, this brings me to a fun example. This is sort of the, what I think of as like the birth of modern data scientists, um, uh, mortality tables. Uh, they didn't have extra data sources, which is like cool. Oh yeah, we're bringing in external data to, to improve our model. They went around and collected church bulletins that listed who died and who lived. And they used that to, to find average ages and life expectancies. And it revolutionized the insurance industry. I mean, banks went in and out of business based on whether they had these tables. And that's from just going collecting data from your local church, you know, where you'd find that. So the idea of putting things in your mind, uh, making them memorable and finding new and clever uses for data sources has been with us for a long time and will be with us still. So where does that take us now? Um, well, we've got distributed file systems, which are kind of like a memory palace. Uh, for a long time, people used uh, like the SQL relational databases uh, and they use that to, to, to be the core of their business. It has to be transactional. It has to reflect the reality and you want to analyze it at the same time and you want to get it, uh, you want it flat, but you also want it normalized. Uh, so that's the same as us cramming those cards in our head. We're trying to use something for the wrong purpose. And you, that, that short-term register for cramming is trying to pick out threats. It's trying to, to make sense of what's going on. You, have an, you need an artificial system, something on the side that doesn't interfere with your real-time operations. We knew this 2,000 years ago. So again, this is, we do another, we have another process. We have an artificial memory, an art, a formal system that kind of is sidelined for analysis later. Uh, here's an example of some big data. Um, 
it's every load from every lane, uh, every day. Uh, at my company, we work with this sort of transportation data. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read. Um, some of these predictions are pretty awesome, we think. Look at those numbers after the decimal. Look at that. It's amazing. Uh, stick with you forever. Well, if you're an analyst, if you're lucky enough to be one of the people for whom numbers tell a story, if you've spent your life doing that, I'm looking around this room, you guys probably can look at numbers, look at code, look at logic, look at math, and then the, it comes alive for you, but for 95% of people, that may not be the case. Uh, is there another way? Uh, well, we could stack the medium in our favor uh, using what we know, using what Simon Edes figured out, that there's sometimes a better way to present things to make it ingestible and memorable and retrievable. Uh, and I want to show you that Do -do. here. So here is, um, this was an open source project called TorFlow to model uh, network traffic in uh, the Tor uh, network. Uh, we adapted it for our lane data. So this is the same data that you saw before in that wonderful spreadsheet, but it allows us to visualize all the, uh, the transportation loads, origin destinations uh, for a given day across our network. Uh, we have the uh, intensity of uh, any given uh, line there connecting is uh, proportional to the rate per mile. So it sticks out what the most, where the most expensive uh, lanes are. Uh, and we're working on things like the thickness represents the volume and the speed of the particles represents the load velocity, like how fast it can get from here to there. But it basically gives you a bird's eye view. This is what an analyst would see in their head when they look at that spreadsheet, but allows everybody else to come into that world. You can navigate around it. You can zoom. You can pull up another day if you're willing to wait the 20 or 10 seconds it takes to reload that. This is just a prototype. It's for internal uses. It's not production scale, but we're working on it. We're going to get there. Um, it's, it's for a different kind of storytelling, but we knew, we saw that it, it needed to be available. We had had this data for decades and we were making some great benchmarks on it, but we weren't able to tell the story of the cool new things we had added. To everyone else, it was just a bunch of columns on an already big spreadsheet, but now it's something much bigger. So that's our memorable data. Um, so that's data science from 500 BC. Thank you for uh, having me. Does anyone have any questions or uh, comments? I work at TMW Systems, just off uh, I-40 in Meridian. We're uh, part of a Trimble company. We have a couple lines of business. But if you, if you use anything with ALK Maps, they're one of our sister companies. But uh, software in the transportation space, routing, logistics, optimization, dispatch. Yes. Uh, so I still have them all. Um, well, I, I got up to, I think I got up to about 12 cards. So Claire Danes, she's at the rock pile behind my house. That's the three of diamonds. George Carlin's at my back door. That's the seven of clubs. Uh, Anthony Daniels, he's the uh, ace of diamonds. That's C3PO, if you guys don't know. He's in my bedroom. He's in pieces. Uh, my wife, the queen of hearts, is sitting at our table. That's uh, then Howard Dean is in my living room with the balloons yelling. Um, that's a dated reference, but it's still alive in my head. Um, queen Bav Morta from Willow is the queen of clubs. She's at my door. Daryl Hannah from Splash is a mermaid by the Brahms by my house. Neil Patrick Harris is at the, at the uh, gas station. Odie's buying liquor at the liquor store. David Carradine from Kung Fu is hitting the train. And my roommate from college is doing yoga on top of the water tower. <laughs> so that's the queen of uh, spades. So it's still stuck in there, um, what I put in there. If I tried to do this again in 20 minutes, I'd have to stop and clear all those things out and visualize them empty. So this, this uh, system does have some, some downsides. But uh, it's not meant for like super long term. It's just to get you from short term to long term. It takes about five days for a short term memory to, to get your brain's like, oh, I... I've thought about this five days in a row now. I think I better store it. I think I better uh, keep that around long term. So it's a great like kind of memory thing in the middle. Now we can instantly go to Stack Overflow. We can go to documentation. But uh, for the things that just won't stick, yeah, you, you might make a system for it. But good question. Anybody else? Okay, great. Uh, well, that's all I have. Um, thank you very much.